Good day and welcome back to another DBZ Dokkan Battle video. In this video we are going to be taking a look at a progression guide as an idea of how you should progress through Dokkan. Now I did one of these before which I'll put in the top right hand corner but I'm going to be updating these every single year uh, so if you want to follow it from the beginning I'll be talking about how players should start Dokkan uh, however obviously progressing through. Now when you start Dokkan, realistically, just do the story mode. It is not the most entertaining thing, but it is going to give you a ton of Dragonstones. And Dragonstones are the most important currency in the game. They allow you to essentially summon, uh, which is how you get stronger. So doing the story is imperative. Whilst doing the story, you will also come across some missions. These are the greatest warrior missions. I can't really show you them because I've obviously completed them. However, I will leave a link to a live stream where I completed all of them in one go. And you can follow along there if you want a longer attribution to them. While you are completing these events, do your growth events, do your daily growth events, all the way up to the point where basically you are finishing the acquiring, you know, the medal events where you've done enough runs, you've completed these missions, you're gonna have more than enough stamina. Do these things so that you can have resources. Do the pan event the moment you unlock it so that you can increase your rank EXP and basically just upgrade your account. The important thing is to push to really upgrade your overall rank, your overall level, because once you have this Goku and once you've pretty much worked your way through the story, or you've got a decent chunk through the story, you're gonna start summoning. And that's where things are gonna start changing for you. So let's talk about that. So you've done, let's say a bit of the story, you've got yourself your legendary Goku. You're at the point where you're now interested in what the next step is. So you're gonna summon. Even if you're a brand new player, even if you don't like the current banner, I always suggest summoning until you get one of the featured DFEs. Don't worry about it, you're gonna have plenty of stones after doing the story, you've got tons, you have literal thousands and thousands of stones to get on your account. Summon until you get a DFE. That way you have a very good starting unit that's going to enable you to progress. Once you have your DFE unit, you then want to look at completing some of these side story options. So whilst you are busy working on your DFE unit, Look at things like Team Bardock, look at things like Hero Extermination Event, the Ginyu Force, and start looking at whatever free to play units you can get to fill up your team. If you're looking for guides on these, you can look under my tutorial playlist. If you're looking on how to build teams, you can look under my playlist there. But realistically, you want to start picking up free to play units that are going to supplement the DFE that you get. You're going to need to fill up your roster and make the strongest team you can before you start clearing Dokkan events. Story events are not ostensibly difficult. The free to play units you use there are definitely viable. Nine times out of 10 to complete Dokken events. And so they're also super easy to Dokken Awaken. And so grabbing them is gonna be very important. And you're probably gonna have a team that looks somewhat similar to this, where you're going to have a whole bunch of units that are not technically Dokken Awakened, but are at least fully trained. Maybe you might find a way to save yourself some Kai's Maybe you will have pulled or summoned on an LR banner and managed to get yourself an LR and you will have your DFE that will lead your team. Now the free to play units like the Khalifla, like the Kale, those are going to be the first units you do can awaken because do can awaken free to play units is very easy. You may not have them easy aid but you will have them awakened. You're then going to probably have a bunch of general banner units like Khalifla, Kale, uh, etc. You'll have your DFE lead, and then you'll be looking pretty solid. Now, obviously, the next step is to look at super attacks and to look at super attack levels before we really go into kind of taking on Dokken events. Because to take on Dokken events is quite difficult, especially when you don't have units that have their super attack leveled. So whilst you are completing these story events, you're going to want to start looking at Extreme Z battles. Now you may think, why am I looking at Extreme Z battles when I'm just a new player? Well, you actually have to complete some Extreme Z battles for the Greatest Warrior missions. 
And the super easy ones like the Dokkan All Stars or the Fierce Fight or the Planet Namek uh, or the Cell uh, Hellfighter Raid. These super easy extremes battles are actually designed to give you access to some resources early on. Be that a couple Kai's, be that a couple hidden potential orbs. These are the ones you want to take on. And once you are taking these on and you push as far as you can, you will have some decent resources with which to upgrade your team. Once you've got your team's SA levels higher or maxed, preferably, then you can consider taking on Dokkan events. Now, Dokkan events will be events you take on which are necessary to awakening your units. They have a little Dokkan in black and gold symbol in the bottom left hand corner. And these events are crucial towards you managing to improve your units. And it's at this point that you're going to have your biggest power spike. Because the moment you Dokkan awaken your lead and your units, clearing other Dokkan events becomes incredibly easy. So once you've Dokkan awakened your units, now you have a team that's fully Dokkan awakened. Maybe you're lucky enough to get an Alar and an Alar banner, and you've got a couple free to play units that are supplementing your team like Kale, like Khalifla. Now you can look at things like Easy A's, or you can look at things like Extreme Z areas. You can also continue to work on your team via completing story events or DB story events. And then realistically, you wanna look at starting with the absolute basics of hard content. So firstly, start looking at Extreme Z areas, especially for the free to play units that you may have used to dirk and awaken your units. Not only are these usually accessible with only free to play units, but these events drop some stones and these Dokken Awakened units or Extreme Z Awakened units are generally very good. Like we're talking SBR, ESBR level at the most part, I use them all the time. And you're also gonna want to continue to try and push as far as you can into every Extreme Z battle. Even if that's only five levels, it's only five levels. But the reason you wanna do this is for hidden potential orbs, which are very hard to come by as a beginner, and also for Kai's. Every time you get to level five, you'll get at least one type Kai, and it doesn't sound like a lot, but these can add up and save you some time. You also want to continue to work on whatever story missions you have, and at this point, you are going to be limited. Your team is going to be limited because you've only worked on one team. You now have to start working on building a roster of units. The easiest way to do this is through collecting all of the free-to-play units you can, be that from story events or DB story events, which are permanently, but also you're gonna have to possibly summon. Now, if you don't want to summon, you're naturally going to hit a bit of a plateau here as you kind of wait for a banner where you can really invest on. But if you are summoning, then you are able to continue your progression by building and working on your team. So it's definitely something I would suggest you look at when you are taking things on. You can also look at doing things like Dokkan Event Boss Rush, which is basically just a whole bunch of Dokkan events strung together and is probably the first hard-ish content that you'll take on. This Dokkan Event Boss Rush will drop a lot of stones, which you can use to then summon to then improve your team. Again, before you really take on end game content, you're probably going to rank up a little bit and start diversifying your units, collecting free to play units. And if you're not summoning, you'll hit a plateau. But if you are, you continue to Dark and Awaken alternative units. And I would say at about the time you unlock Ultimate Clash is when you can start considering really working towards actual end game content. Now end game content not only requires strong teams, but it requires quite a few teams. There's a lot of teams you can build in Dokkan, and to truly take on in-game content, you're going to need a lot of units, like a lot of units. So be prepared to start working on those units. Um, by this means, uh, the best way to start doing this and the best hard content I would say to start with is Super Battle Road, especially the first 10 Super Battle Roads. So not only do Super Battle Roads teach you about stunning and sealing, but a lot of these skills and teams you build here are gonna be super useful for Ultimate Clash. And considering Ultimate Clash is a great source of stones and Kai's and hidden potential orbs, 
starting with Super Battle Road and building teams to take out the Super Tech, Super AGL, Super Strength, etc. is going to expand your roster, but also it's going to help to really improve your box and improve it to the point where you're probably going to be able to clear some distance into Ultimate Clash. So it's very important to start working on this and really start to kind of push your team and upgrade your team and take on these stages. Now, obviously the beginning Super Battle Road stages are a good place to start, but I would say Super Battle Road probably up to stage 30 is realistically very achievable, even for new accounts, just due to the power creep that occurs in the game. But Super Battle Road is a great place to start. Not only does it prepare your box for Ultimate Clash, but it also helps you to expand on your rosters with a goal in mind. Your next step is probably to look at building Fighting Legend Goku. This also helps to expand your teams, especially if you do the category challenges, but it also helps you to build different units, units that stack defense, units that have guard, units that are just more outright stronger in numbers uh, than the traditional SBR. Once you are done kind of working on these, maybe you've completed uh, a couple team challenges, maybe you've completed a couple challenges in the SBR, you can also look at Infinite Dragon Ball History. It's an event that has varying team difficulties, and honestly, super strong teams can clear pretty much every IDBH stage, but a really cool thing is to prioritize the missions, and again, allow that to naturally expand your box. It's important that you don't disregard missions. Building one singular strong team is great, but being able to complete all the missions helps to prepare your box and expand your units so that when teams change or metas change, you have more variety. And it also just helps to acquire more stones, which in turn helps you to summon more, which in turn helps to increase the strength of your team. Now, in terms of the next step, Let's say you've done SPR, you've done Fighting Legend Goku, you've done a couple IDBHs, you're feeling pretty confident, you've diversified your team, and you're really starting to look towards the next kind of power gap that you want to take on. The next one is going to be Extreme Super Battle Road. That's realistically your next growth point. It's where you can test stronger versions of your mono teams, it's where you can test to see if your category teams can handle the upkeep and power. And it's just a good natural progression. Now later SBR are as tough as some ESBR stages. So don't stop doing SBR, but start to do the two in conjunction. I'd say anything from around stage 31 SBR and stage one ESBR, you can start kind of mixing them up in conjunction and just doing them as you see fit with whatever units you feel you have good enough to do both. Once you've fiddled around with ESBR a little bit, your next step naturally is to look at some other events. Now this is kind of where Transcendent Gods of Destruction fits in, in a gap. Because Transcendent Gods of Destruction uh, is a very tough event. It's definitely harder than ESBR in some cases, and it kind of prepares you for a little bit of red zone. The bosses have gimmicks, the bosses have mechanics, uh, they have different strategies, they have different mechanisms that you have to work around. So try to attempt Gods of Destruction once you're super confident in your ESBR team and your Fighting Legend Goku teams. I can't guarantee you'll win, but it's going to give you a good idea of what you need to work on to improve your team. At the same time, Epic Collection of Battles also falls into this slot. It's not distinctly as hard as the Gods of Destruction event, but again, it's more mechanic based, allowing you to build slightly different variant teams. And then you can look at doing things like Fighting Legend Goku GT, Fighting Legend Vegeta. These are your next power creep step, especially for longer form units. So units that need to stack harder and just stack faster, they need to be more powerful and just need to be outright stronger than the teams you were putting out for the Fighting Legend Goku event. It's also at this point that you can consider alternative events as well. A good alternative event to consider here is 
again uh, looking at the different variants of things like collection of epic battles etc where you can have some different kind of events and things like the fighting spirits of the saiyans and pride of the wicked bloodlines this is actually a very hard event and it has advantageous characters so it's not something you may be able to clear in fact in some circumstances it could be considered harder than red zone but again it's a very good event to kind of push another level on to really start to look at your box identify specific weaknesses and address them in those events then we finally get to what i like to say is the kind of big end game so that is things like red zone where your units have to be top of the line and things like fearsome activation cell max which is again where units need to be top of the line although in a different way and completing any of these i mean even completing some of the earlier ones is a true challenge and isn't as easy as some people make it out to be a lot of people forget how hard the beginning of dokan is and so when you make it here you can consider yourself a very veteran level-headed dokan player there is the new event that comes out with the new anniversary which i would put a little bit ahead of those but that's it for me bye